All right, this is JPEG, the Raw Photo Review, show number 25. We're back from a short, um, uh, what do you call it, short break. And we're now, we're catching back up. We're doing the February uh, photos that were entered into our contest. Before we get into those, I wanted to show you um, the how you can enter if you want to enter into the contest. There's, there's two ways, one from Facebook, and there's links here on our site, and the other is from our site, jpegderaw.com slash contest. You can go there, you can enter the beginner, you can enter the, the regular group through the site or through Facebook. Either way, you can go that way and, and enter if you're still on Facebook. Not, ev- not everybody is still on Facebook. But, you know, you can always enter through the website also uh, to do that. All right, um, so tonight, like I mentioned, we're going over the, the February images. And um, we're going to hang out, uh, I should say, hang out for the post show too because we're going to do a little bit of catching up on AD. We did a little bit in the pre-show. We're going to do a little bit more in the post-show, because last time we talked to AD, he was in the process of moving, and now he's, I think, moved, but, um, well, physically moved. And if you've ever moved, you know there's a long process of getting settled back in. Uh, so that's still going on. Um, but we'll talk about that in the post-show And before we do that, let me get uh, our first image up, which is from the beginners group. Hold on here. There we go. And this is from Christina Binge, this first image up. And, And I will say, Christina, we had several people in the group who are just so creative and coming up with different things. Christina says, playing around with Alien Bee Light. Awesome. Um, my youngest daughter in a small, seamless backdrop had a, had a prompt of Kool-Aid. <laughs> uh, had a prompt of Kool-Aid. So that's what I came up with for it. Still much to learn with using natural light sources, with non-natural light sources, but thought I'd post. And that, I think that's awesome to be trying to work with non-natural light sources, you know, flashes and and that kind of stuff, because it is a different challenge. You know, it's a lot of people are are intimidated, including me, by the, you know, flash. It does add another complexity to it. But um, here, Christina trying that, and I I think she did an awesome job. Yeah, I agree. And uh, this is uh, a good example. We've talked about this before, and this is, you know, One of the reasons why Christina is not a beginner photographer, Uh, we don't consider that she is, and but she did submit to this group, and that's great because what she's doing is experimenting. And a lot of times, we have life gets busy, or the weather doesn't play well, we can't get out. Um, I love just doing stuff in the studio and experimenting and finding out what my camera and my equipment is capable of. And of course you're learning and you will be surprised how much that you learn in the studio and learn, uh, even with flash units and everything else, uh, that will enhance your other photography. So say you're a landscape photographer and that's what you love to do, but the weather's crappy or maybe you break your ankle or you can't get out or something, but you still, you don't, you, you don't, not love photography anymore. So you want to do something. Um, and you can set up stuff in your house and practice. And what this is going to do is you're going to learn to use your flashes. You're going to use, learn to use different light sources and whatnot. And then when you get back on your feet or the weather clears up or you get the chance to travel, you can try different things with those flashes. Like, and I'll give you a, a, for instance, once you learn how to trigger your flash and you learn to trigger it off camera, Um, I've done photo shoots at night where we have artificially lit the insides of buildings, uh, and whatnot to really enhance the scene. Um, and you know, if I hadn't wanted or played around with the flashes and known how to operate them, then that probably wouldn't even have been an option to even try. But we ended up getting an amazing image because we practiced, uh, uh, something completely out of our realm, you know, uh, we, it, and I suggest this all the time, Mike, I think mm-hmm. on the show, we talk about it all the time and, um, is always, uh, try different things, um, and run, run full force into maybe what's not your forte, or you might, you might be surprised. It might become your forte. <laughs> you never know. Um, and, and I think this is a great example of that. It shows, uh, Christina's practicing here. And, um, I like the shot. If we were to talk about, 
the particulars of the shot. And, and Christina, if you're looking to delve into this a little bit more, I consider this to be kind of like a product uh, shot or a stock shot um, that you would sell. Um, and when you get into stock photography and you start getting into that sort of thing, there's just a few suggestions here. I'd probably get rid of the Kool-Aid packages themselves. I think it's pretty self-explanatory what's going on there. Um, and it would sell as a stock image. Actually, you couldn't have the, the Kool-Aid labels in there to sell it as a stock image, by the way, just so you know. Um, because what's on that package is actually copywritten mm -hmm. and you can't reprint or resell those um, out uh, without permission. Um, and, and basically the way the Kool-Aid company looks at it is like this image, even though it's great and they probably would like it to represent their company, um, they, you know, without authorization, they wouldn't want you to, to label this. Anybody sees this says, oh, this is Kool-Aid, right? And Well, if you try to submit it to a yeah. stock agency, they won't even accept it unless right. you have the, the, the release. Right, yeah. and they'll, she would actually need a release for her daughter to be signed as well right. because you can see her whole face, um, and that's how that whole thing works. But a little – you know, I would probably uh, nix that um, if you wanted to do this as a stock image. And then also the little tip of the blue straw in the bottom of the uh, picture. Now, I know this isn't a big thing, but with product photography, it really comes down to – in stock photography, it really comes down to guiding the person's eye and selling the product. Um, so you don't want any distractions anywhere. You really want to control what the viewer sees. Um, so I would probably just have cloned out that little blue straw down there in the bottom. Um, but other than that, it's a beautiful image. I mean, focus, everything is great. The the focus is right on the eyes. And, and uh, she shot with a big enough depth of field that you can see everything in, mm -hmm. in the image, nice and tack sharp. Um, it looks like she did a good job with the lighting too. And the lighting. So, yeah, that's, I left that for less. Um, and that's a great uh, a great point. A, she's got an Alien B light, which are awesome lights and um, very controllable. And she's learning to use that. And I think that, you know, I would say uh, just my opinion here, but I would say, you know, mission successful. I think it, I think she learned mm -hmm. to get a good shot. I, the light looks very natural. It doesn't look like it's coming from an artificial source. She doesn't have cast shadows behind her subject. Um, you know, and, and to further this, Christina, move that light around. Maybe try some stuff where the, the light's coming from behind and in front. You know, uh, alien bees, I know, are very expensive, so you probably don't have two of them. If you do, that's awesome. Um, you might want to play with having some, some you know, backlight a little bit. And, and uh, we used a thing called a snoot. I don't know if mm -hmm. you ever – uh, use those, Mike, but basically it just focuses the whole flash down into a little round beam of light. And they're great for putting them down low behind the subject so that they don't flash out into the scene. But you can target that backlight right on the back of the yeah. person's head yeah. or hair, and it will give that nice shimmer around their hairline mm -hmm. uh, and really add an accent uh, to, to that as well. So she's definitely on the right track. Uh, I wonder that's if she, awesome. I wonder if she thought about this as a stock image because you're right. If you take the Kool-Aid out and she that's can, she can reshoot this again since it's, you know, na uh, uh, um, you know, artificial light. She yeah. has, you know, she can just recreate this scene again and shoot that. And I bet you it would sell. Absolutely. And if you delve into product photography, now it's a wonderful thing. And we all know there's bad product photography because we've seen it. Um, just go to Amazon. You can find some of it. And there's good product photography. Um, and any, if you follow any good product photographers, you will know, uh, you will learn very quickly that that business is, uh, it's, it's a little bit in, uh, pre so getting it set up the shot mm -hmm. set up and, and executing the shot but there is a lot of post processing in product photography a lot of it mm -hmm. um and, and you you can clean an item and blow it clean and take a picture of it with a camera with lights on it and everything and all of a sudden all all these little speckles of dust will right. show up out of nowhere um and you have to go through and clone every single bit of that out it's got to look you know brand new perfect um, no one wants to represent, you know, the the new iPad with a dusty, yeah, <laughs> a dusty the iPad all over the place. Yeah, right. Yeah, and so it's a very, um, it's an amazing industry, and uh, the the editors are really amazing that, that edit those photos, and and uh, I just some of the like I've seen water splashes, you know, where they make the water go into shapes. 
Um, you've probably seen mm-hmm. stuff like that for different uh, sorts of alcoholic beverages. They have that. Um, and it's just amazing. But that's all, you know, a lot of it is post. So yeah. um, there's some pre shots, and then they take some shots of just the water, and then they get the water to kind of take, take like 50 shots of water, go splashing up, and then edit it in. So I love that she's trying, you know, trying this, and I think it's uh, she's definitely successful at it. So I yeah. hope to see more images uh, from Christina. We, we've liked uh, all of her shots that she submitted. So absolutely. Th- um, great job, Christina. So, yeah. All right. Next is this image from Scott Norris. And I don't know what you see when you see this, but well, now that I've seen it, I can't unsee it. Okay. I, I always, and it's not a negative. It's just what I think of when I see this image. I think uh-huh. of Star Trek. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so funny story. <laughs> Uh, I think I was with, uh, now maybe not with Scott on the, that day. Um, but, uh, Scott, you know, lives in Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. So, um, and he took me to the art museum and we went around and we shot together and just kind of played through each other's eyes a little bit because he goes there all the time. And I was, uh, you know, I was a noob going there and I was seeing different things and he was really enjoying that, that I had a different view. Um, I could have been there the day he shot this. I don't know. I think this might be a little later, but yeah, I totally, um, this, this whole, uh, entryway, uh, we had a submission last week or the week before of the entryway to right. the, to the Milwaukee art museum. And it is just stunning. Um, it's stark white. Like that's what I thought too. When I was there, I was like, wow, this is like the most futuristic, uh, you know, and I think I was on my Twitter page for a long time. I had the Milwaukee art museum with the lake, mm-hmm. um, shot out in back of it. And, uh, it's just stunning the the building and, and I, Wish I could think of the architect because I knew it right off the top of my tongue. Like, and Scott will tell you in two seconds because he's like a living history of this place. But yeah, um, Scott just always conjures, he takes simple things and conjures great stories. I mean, um, and you can't look at his images without your brain going, you know, like, oh, wow, that's cool. Like, yeah. ooh, I just imagine, you know, that's what it makes your brain do. And I think that's a sign that, you know, he's a successful artist. Um, he's a, he's a starving artist like most artists are, artists are, but he's successful in the fact that he does, he does the job when you, when he takes an image like this, um, I'm going to pick on Scott, even though he's in a regular group, Scott, I'm going to get you, man. Cause oh, yeah. you know, Scott, <laughs> Scott was my, Scott was my apprentice. Um, for, you know, and I say that lightly, we, we studied together pretty yeah. much. Uh, Scott's a brilliant uh, guy. Um, and he became a master at the Arcanum. I'm but wondering what Scott, you're going to say about this one. Cause I, yeah. So Scott, there's a dust spot on your photo right in the center above the circle. There is a dust spot, my friend. Hmm. It's right there. I am pointing at it like you. So if you look at the pyramid yeah. and you go straight up, um, exactly in the, the center between the the top part of the circle yeah, and the that's actual a dust top spot. That's not there. just a, don't think it's that that's the perspective's wrong for it to be a recessed light or anything like that. Cause it would be lo- oval, you know, it'd be the same shape as the, the circle that you're looking at. So I'm oh, picking on Scott for that. Scott, you missed that man. Come on. I had several Come spots on. on my monitor. I had to get <laughs> off before I could find it. <laughs> oh, do you know how many times I've been editing a photo and been like, why won't that spot remove? Why can't I get it off the photo? <laughs> this thing doesn't. Oh, it's on my monitor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yep, had that's happened. <laughs> Gary asks, is this picture a composite? Um, no, this is not. This is what's be- – if you ever get a chance, Gary, to go to the Milwaukee Art Museum, dude, you just could wander in there for hours and see these cool – like it is like being in some other – like in the future. This building is so remarkable and stark white everywhere and they keep it spotless. Um, you know, so uh, you can find these crazy angles and all this cool symmetry. So, no, this is not a composite. This is actually the the real deal. Now, he may have done some editing on the lights that go around the bottom, um, but I'm not – they're not perfectly symmetrical. So I'm going to say he probably just post-processed this uh, as far as for tone and that sort of stuff. But there's nothing here that I believe that's out of place or changed um, as far as I know. Well, it is a, it is a cool look. Yeah, very cool. 
Scott always submits things that just make me want to go out and shoot because anytime yeah. I see really good photography, I'm like, oh man, I gotta get out there and do this. <laughs> this is why I do this is to get stuff like this. Get, so uh, yeah, motivated. Yep. Yep. Very cool. All right. Up next is um, this one from Amber. And Amber. Amber says, this is a composite, by the way, Gary. Yes, <laughs> for sure. Uh, another composite shot from the setup I posted earlier in the week. I am a firm believer in laughing at yourself. It's okay for girls to look and act silly. Not all portraits need to be prim and proper. Just because I'm not model material, and she put that in quotes, uh, mm-hmm. doesn't mean I should, shouldn't have pictures of myself. Phone selfies don't count. Absolutely. Uh, and so, yeah, and I would much rather see uh, these photos of all my female friends than than selfies. So yeah. I hate selfies. So and, I'm just saying. and I know that uh, we'll talk about this one, I think, when we do the March photos, because you mm-hmm. you gave her some ideas on something she did for a photo for that one. Yep. Um, so she's doing she's getting into the composite side of doing this. And in this one. Uh, I like how she added the little fog onto the glass there. Yeah, that's a nice touch. Um, yeah. Let's talk about um, things in the image that when you do a composite like this. So Amber's venturing out into uh, unknown territory, she, and she's doing a, a wonderful job. She's putting herself out there, which is very important, and especially in this group where we talk about this sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Compositing is a ridiculous hard thing to pull off and make it believable Um, because you're usually taking two different shots with two different lenses or more. Sometimes it's five different cameras and five different lenses, who knows? Um, But it's very hard to match the position of the camera, the angle of the camera, the angle of the light, the light sources, all of that stuff to make a believable image. You have to edit that stuff in post or get it right when you take the shot. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've taught for many years compositing in, in the, in, I've had a lot of shots put out there, not of landscapes, but that I've done for products I've done for senior photo shoots and that sort of stuff that have been composites. And what we, uh, basically try to do is, is we have to take the element that we like the light in. So I would take like this scene, I would take the jar and all that looks great in, in the light. And I would try to make sure that the light on amber uh, matched what I'm seeing in the outside part of it. And also, on top of that, the angles of everything have to match as well. So what stands out to me in the image is her left hand is just curved a little bit uh, too much for the inside of the glass. Um, because of the circumference of the glass, it probably would look better if her, her if her left hand wasn't so turned yeah, out yeah. and it was a little bit more flat. And that would have been more believable as in, um, in, in as she was pressing against the glass. And like you said, the fog and everything, that's excellent. That works great. Um, I think I would have probably put a cap on the glass too because <laughs> – it's like you're trapped in the bottle, yeah. right? And that kind of sells the story because the bottle's open. You're like, well, just jump up and get out of the bottle. I mean, you know, if, if, so you're trying to tell a story here. There's a whole bunch of elements to learn with composites, especially what you're, you know, when you're trying to tell a story with adding all these components. The ones of the dogs that she did were mm-hmm. were amazing. I mean, they were tied together very well. She did a little extra work on that. Um, you have to do some dodging and burning around the edges of your uh, your composited in uh, subject. So in in like an image like this, I think I would have tried to make um, maybe I would take a, a clone of her um, uh, the layer that she's using for herself, and I would actually distort that using the um, in Photoshop. You can and use the uh, I think it's called uh, liquify, liquify tool, yeah. and you can bend the image. And what I would do is try to kind of widen myself out a little bit and mm. squeeze because you know how, like reflections glass in glass and you can kind of see it yeah they distort it and then what i do is then lower that opacity way way down to maybe one or two percent so it just is a shadow there and you can see the reflection these are all things that'll sell the image because right now you can see the fog in front and that's a little bit of a selling part she did do around the shoe 
uh, there, and that's a good selling part. Mm -hmm. But then you notice the rim of the glass uh, right, in front of between between the knee and the and the foot. Right. So, yeah. Amber, I'll give you a little hint here, which will help you out. Um, make a copy of the jar front where you're going to appear and save it off on a layer by itself and just just the jar front and then paste yourself in there and you'll know what I'm talking about on a layer and then the next layer above it move that jar front that you copied to the layer above you so it's in front of you now blocking you and then what you want to do is change the blend mode on that actual layer to soft light and what that'll do is it'll take all the highlights and it'll draw them in front of you and that'll make people believe you're really in the glass cool. because right now I can see the rim around the glass goes behind her her legs yet she did the bottom rim perfectly um, so that's a little tip on how you can get the the glass reflections in front of you and that's what you want right you want the yeah. glass to be see-through you want to look like you're in the jar so a thousand points for uh, trying and, and doing it but you're expanding now and you're getting better so you're moving into more complex composites and these are the things that you're going to need to learn is um okay glass is supposed to be in front of me how do i get a jar that i only have a picture of you know from behind me because i'm pasting in front of it to in front of me so it's changing your blending mode so just try copying you can actually copy the whole image i would i would just copy a marquee out but you can copy the whole image and put it on its own layer change the blending mode to soft light and then change the opacity so it shows you through the glass but the glass reflections will be in front of you yeah. Um, so yeah, just, but I think that's why Amber submits cause she knows we'll help and we'll suggest. And she's, so she's definitely listening cause, uh, I know she took some, a lot of your advice on the one we're going to talk about yeah. next show. Cool. Yeah. And, and I, I love this cause this is, this is what I started, Mike, this before I even had uh, a camera in my hands, uh, in when I first got a computer, I was part of this thing called the Walrus Wallpaper Club <laughs> over on the news groups. And they would submit images and they would say, make a desktop wallpaper out of in this group, out of this image. And you would composite all these cool things together. And there would be like 60 or 70 people working on these images. Of course, for you new kids, it's called Reddit today. That's what they do on Reddit a lot. And, and so it essentially was this great – you got all these great wallpapers from all these people, but it taught me to composite and taught me to, to kind of blend modes and, and really get into that whole uh, thing with Photoshop. So uh, Amber, please reach out if you want you know any one-on-one -on -one help or, or whatnot. I'd be more than happy to, to uh, go over some images or do some edits for you and then record them. Uh, I tell this to everybody who submits. I think this, uh, you know, you guys need to reach out a little bit. I know I'm not on Facebook, but you know how to get a hold of me mm -hmm. through my website or whatever. Um, if you're interested and you need a tutorial for something or you have, you know, you're like, um, okay, I heard what you said on the show. Can you show me how to do it? I'll make a tutorial for you. This, that's what I do. I'll just edit the image and, and record it while I do it. It won't be anything fancy, but you'll, you'll get it. Yep. So you get to watch it. So, yeah, uh, any of you guys out there with any of these images that we talk about, feel free and, to reach out. Yeah, you're not on Facebook anymore, but, you know, we'll talk in the, in, uh, later in the, in the, at the end of the show about how all the different ways you can get in touch with AD and follow him. And, of course, you could always just post something in Facebook, and you know, and I can relay the message, too. Absolutely. Um, that way, too. Yep. So there's multiple ways. We haven't lost track with AD. That's right. <laughs> I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, up next is our good friend, um, Millen. Ooh, awesome. And Millen Smith submits this one um, from Bulgaria. Oh, man. It looks Let's cool. see. It's one of the biggest water f facilities in my country. It's a pity this time of year we had snowy winter for about three or four days. But I still managed to make a small winter walk, and this is the result. And, yes, this is a slope. That's why it looks tilted to one side. Yep. Yep. But the the line in the background, Millen, the line in the background, your horizon, which I can clearly see, is tilted. So I, I understand the foreground's tilted, and that's cool, and the mid foreground is tilted, and that's fine. But always make sure that your horizon, way in the distance, that's gotta be level, my friend. That's that's what that's what we're talking about when we're talking about level. Um and I wonder other than if, that I wonder if the though, lean that you're seeing right there throws people off. You know, you have a big lean, a big uh, mm -hmm. it going one way in front of you, and you get thrown off by the fact that you need to look at that far away horizon. 
So you know you know what the dead giveaway for me is, Mike, without looking at the horizon? What's that? Conifer trees grow straight up. You know, one straight in the middle is leaning? Both of them are all of them are leaning. If you if you line these up on the edge of the screen, you see that all of them are leaning a little bit off to the left, which means that the the uh, the horizon itself, which is the light line in the back. I wish I could just have a pointer and show you guys, but yeah, the the that light line that's in the back there, where the little snow is kind of crossing over that, um, that's your horizon. That's got to be straight no matter what, and it's not. I can tell you if I if I put it off to the edge of the screen, I can easily see. I actually just take the the Chrome window and I can put it between my monitors, and I use the edge of my monitor just to. Uh, yeah. To uh, to kind of you know show show that it uh, I can see the line so um, and I always do that before I say anything because <laughs> I know that you you know your eyes can play tricks on you especially if you have bifocals which I have um, I don't know if many people know this but um, if you have bifocals you have to work very hard to make sure that your head when you're using your camera is absolutely level. Um, when you're trying to get lines to line up, because if you tilt your head a little to the side, everything becomes a parallelogram at that point, mm -hmm. and actually the lines will distort. Um, so you have to be very careful. And I've had to learn um, that uh, with since I've had bifocals, um, and I've got the transition, the lenses that basically have the no line right. in them. Me too. Um, yeah, and so I've noticed though in a lot of my images when I go out, I'm like, wow. Yeah, I must have had my head just slightly turned, and you know we'll we'll maybe put our camera down low, and we'll kind of go like this when we right. look in it, yep. and we don't realize because and so now I, every time I'm in my camera, I use those lines on the inside of my viewfinder um, to check everything before I before I do it. But it's a it's a big thing whenever there's water, okay, and whenever you can see a, a distant horizon in landscape, always make sure they're straight because. It's going to make people just have an uneasy feeling no matter what. Even if they don't notice it, it gives people an uneasy feeling. And and to maximize the power of your image, and you got a gorgeous image here of the snow. Um, looks just like upstate New York. Yesterday was snowing here like that. It was great. <laughs> it's supposed to be spring here, but it's not. Um, so it reminds me of home. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's he's got a wonderful scene. I can see the snow flying, which I, I really like a lot. I love the tones of this. Mm, Millen's come too. so far uh, in the last year. His images have just gone. I mean, I, we got to go back and find some of his first images, dude. And we yeah. got to have a show on Millen and his progress uh, just from then to now. I mean, you know what we need to do? What's we that? should do a special. We should do a special. A Millen special? Not just Millen. Oh, okay. But let's – because there's we have a lot of people – uh, in the group that have really, group, you know, yes. I mean, that's why we continue to do the show is because we're seeing people like trying new things and being creative. And I think it would be wonderful just to do a show about, you know, the core people that submit every week and we'll go back and find the way back images and show the then and now. We that would be that. cool. That would be cool because sure. I love seeing that improvement. You know, I I think you know the number of people come to mind: Amber and Christina and Kristen, yeah, uh, Kristen, Nancy, yep. um, you know, Millen and and a number of others. And speaking of Christina, she just she just got here and missed the first half of the show. We talked all about her image, so yep. she got all about go, it. She's going to go back and listen. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So up next is actually the one who won. Kenny Robertson. This was the winning image for that for that month for May. I'm uh, not May for February. Um, yeah, I, said, took this with my grandpa in his shop a couple weeks ago. Awesome. tried tried to bring the vision that I saw of him working in my mind's eye into the frame. Yeah, I can't I can't fault this image at all. I I think it's it's a gorgeous image and um, it's just got a little of everything in. The mm -hmm. focus point is perfect. I am not drawn. I like looking around the room in his yeah, shop and seeing all the different stuff, but it's that look of him and in, in in the the uh, the high key light in the background and everything. I I think is a, a beautiful image and very well done. Um, and I haven't is Kenny uh, submitted many you images because we don't I, see too many from him. No, I don't think so. This may have been his first one. I to be honest, I don't remember oh, if he's done any more. Way to come out of the gates there, Ken. Yeah, this is this is <laughs> fabulous. Um, 
you know, and, and yeah, you're right. Once you look at it, he, the, the guys, the, the grandpa is obviously the subject, but then I'd look around and see all kind of things in there too. Yeah. But yeah. I'm not drawn away from him in that no. respect. Um, he is really the, you know, with his hand on the lever mm-hmm. and he, you know, he's really, um, you know, you can see he's working there and, uh, uh, on the machine and and yeah i just that, that's really awesome this is a great job um you know if, if there's suggestions um you know maybe a, even more of a vignette on it um although he's used most of the room as a natural vignette yes, which yeah. i kind of like um you know and, and there's a bunch of stuff that you could do um you know uh shooting at a different time of the day and and again not faulting this image i just always offer up suggestions for things to try for different creative looks but i would love to see what it would look like with that light on and just using the light as your source yeah of illumination for the room and him concentrating just like he is with just the light shining down on what he's working on there i'm just you know that's what i think of like how can i do different things with this situation and try different different ways to uh you know and, and again is this great stock image even though it's grandpa and it means something for him this is a would, this is a great yeah yeah I, I think it would sell too you know i have a, a shot of my kid eating a hot dog and it's sold a, a bunch yeah yeah so Good I, yeah, stuff. I, I could see this one selling too kenny keep submitting images man these are great yeah we'd love to see more love to see more all right up next is let me get this ready i did I didn't add any words, did I, to this? Well, uh, I, I just say that here's to new beginnings and a head start into spring, which I wish was true, but it is yeah. really not. So you you see it. Um, not, that's not Kenny. Um, but for nope. whatever reason on my screen, I'm not seeing the, the name. Where the, oh, the it's no, Christina's image no again. Yeah, Christina. Oh. So... Um, Christina entered in the regular in the beginner group. This is her image in the the regular group, and I you read the text. I can't read the text because I it's off my screen. It's weird, <laughs> strange. Yeah, it's a this is a very classic image. I like it a lot. Um, I think for me uh, the it's somewhere like it's shot well. I like the light. I mm-hmm. like the lens choice. I like all of that stuff. Um, you know what? The, the the hardest part about it is that it's a symmetrical image that's not symmetrical. You know, like it's kind of a little off. And a little bit to um, the left. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little off. Um, and I'm not sure, like, and I, I ask this all the time, and Christina's out there, and I'd love to know. Um, but, Christina, was it just like you, you just wanted to represent – like, you know, growth or, uh, uh, cause I, I, I know the whole in your head, the whole here's to new beginnings and a head start in the spring, but I don't get the head start in the spring thing. I do, you know, I know it's a, a new plant growing, but there's nothing to signify like some plants grow in the middle of fall, you know, some plants pop up in fall, um, which is weird, but they do. Mm -hmm. Um, so for me, it, it, I get the whole new beginnings thing or the growth. That's what I get from this image. Um, so it's hard for me to derive the story beyond that, um, of the image. So, uh, it means something to you, which is important. And that's the driving force behind it. But remember when you're conveying a story to someone else, um, you want to make sure if you have the story and you're very strong about it and you want them to get it, you've got to really be over the top about putting it in their face so that they get it. And, I don't know and how don't, you would t- say spring. Uh, the new um, beginnings, the new beginnings is is easy. You get that from right. It, it definitely right. screams that. So, but a new beginnings to me would be more like um, I know it's a baby plant, but almost. I would even want to see it be, even be a younger plant, oh. maybe almost just popping out of the seed mm-hmm. sort of thing or something, you know, with, with, with a little bit younger. Um, this is kind of like a young adult uh, plant here that's it's already got. Right, right, exactly. Um, so, 
so yeah, I think about all of those things. And I know it's like, well, you're you're thinking really deep on all this, and, <laughs> and but you have to when you're trying to convey a thing uh, out to other people. It doesn't reach into the fine art realm because there's a little bit too much going on. There's a little bit too much dirt on the hands, uh, extraneous extra dirt around the edges uh, and under the fingernails and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and it isn't, you know, a, a more fine art image would be a little bit higher key and a little bit cleaned up. Uh, and very symmetrical. I think that's the thing that uh, keeps it from there for me. So while it's an image that represents something for her and would work perfect in a blog or anything like that for, you know, um, this is this one isn't so much as a selling image as the other image that we did, her first image, which mm-hmm. I think was easily a, a sellable image uh, without a problem. This one doesn't quite do it for me. Now it might sell, one or two, but I don't think it would be like a consistent seller because I'm not. I don't get the uh, the message that yeah, and it does. Uh, Jan brings up that the hands almost form a heart, and there's a thing, right? You you can tilt your hands and practice a little bit with this. And Christine is in that mode right now, mm-hmm. so I'm um, hopefully she's getting that we're not tearing her image down. What we're doing is saying keep going, keep trying, keep keep uh, experimenting with this and trying different things to see what works out and really conveys that message for you. The hardest thing in photography to do is convey your message because you're already preloaded. That's the problem. It's really hard to erase what we already know and put ourselves in the first timers mode of seeing an image that we didn't take because we have a backstory and that's, that's the difficulty in photography. Welcome to why it's hard to take a really good photo uh, and convey a story. And that's why, uh, you know, certain images, you look at them and you're like, wow, I see exactly why that photo was taken. Mm-hmm. And then other images, you you kind of make up your own story. And some images, you don't make up any story at all. You just, it, it's Move too on, chaotic. Yeah. Right. I think this is an image where you make up your own story. That's kind of the way I look at it. It's kind of right in the middle. So it shows that she's practicing and trying different things. And I think that uh, she needs to keep going. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm loving to see, you know, I'm always excited every month to see what Christina and Amber and you know, yep. some of the others are going to submit because they always – like, I don't know how they're going to keep doing this every month, keep one up in the previous month. Well, in lessons learned to anybody else out there who's mm-hmm. A, not submitting Jan, and um, B, anybody else who just – you know who is submitting and is to keep – like, you know, trying this, this different stuff. This is what's going to make you grow as a photographer is, mm-hmm. is basically being willing to go outside the box. And that's, that's where all the knowledge is outside the box. What you already know is inside the box. That's, that's the way it works. So, um, and Gary brings up, a um, a good, uh, thing here. You could use the warp tool to straighten this. Yeah. I could put this in Photoshop and, and, you know, make this perfect symmetry using the, 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 um, the warp tool and the liquify tool and, and probably make it perfect. And you can even, you know, Christina play with those tools and have fun with them. Cause you can make some really crazy wild images. Um, you could, <laughs> you could make the stem of the flower, like all curved and every, all sorts of crazy stuff. But, um, I think here I'm basically shooting for a more of out of the camera experience, um, because that's, I think what she's presented me with, but yeah, you could definitely edit this and, and do a lot of things with this particular image. Um, we don't go into that too much in the show, uh, uh, talking about fixing an image. We always talk about trying it again, like right. trying better yourself in the camera. Well, you uh, showed us sometimes you showed us some, you've done some, um, live yeah, edits. Yeah. Post edits are kind of just to get the point across though. Mm-hmm. I hardly ever s- suggest re-editing an image, um, to s- sort out a problem, you know, you know, uh, to fix a photo, um, although that is a thing, and, and I, I have done it here and there on photos that I couldn't go retrieve again. But a lot of times um, I use it as a learning experience, and I'm like, you know, I'm going to go take this photo again, and I'm going to try to, you know, try some of those suggestions, different positions, different lighting, that sort of thing, just to see what I can come up with. Because that's a that's just part of the learning process. And, and you got to be careful with closing that out too much and not doing it once in a while. It's easy to say, mm-hmm. well, I'll edit it and we'll go with that. But once in a while, you still got to do those reshoots just so you can expand your range a little bit, I think. So, so. All right. We've got one image left for tonight. And that is this one from okay. Lewis. I'm not going to try the last name. <laughs> um, from Lewis and he says before photography I didn't care much for flowers uh, you gave them a, a week or two and they would die but now I've learned to appreciate them more even though I, I 
gave them to my lovely girlfriend. Appreciate no more when you have a girlfriend or a wife is a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like they were for me too. Um, so take advantage of the Valentine's leftovers. I guess he set this up and and shot it uh, with a fill flash and umbrella. What else? My main goal was to get as much light deep into the petals that had harsh shadows. Nice. Yeah, he did some touch up in Lightroom, uh, balanced the shadows out, and so on and so forth. Um, and he wasn't looking for total sharpness, so he shot at f7.1, which, you know, in macro mode is going to still give you some depth uh, in the focus there. So, yeah, I think um, excellent job um, on it and definitely goal achieved, which is, you know, first thing we always want to talk about out of the gate is if you specify your goal to me, which was he wanted to get light deep into this rose, and mm-hmm. it's a beautiful shot. It's very monochromatic, which I really love. Um, about you know a fine art image like this. This is what I would consider fine art. It's it's uh, got a very monochromatic um, single subject, uh, very minimalistic. Uh, all of those things uh, are great, and so he definitely hit his goal there without any uh, problem at all. And uh, I think if I had one suggestion, I'd say um, you know make sure that if you're going to do that editing in Lightroom, that you take care of small things. Um, in the image, always go around your image, every single line, every single area, especially for fine art stuff. You want them to be very clean. Um, and this image has a few things in it. And one of them would be there, uh, just below the center of the rose to the right, about one, two, three lines out. There's a little white mark mm-hmm. there that's near the center. So that's going to be a slight distraction. Yep. There's also a little hair on the on the uh, left side of the photo uh, about four rings in from the edge and another dark mark there. So you just want to clone those out and get rid of them uh, because you got a very clean, very soft, very pretty image here. And we don't want any detritus in the image. We don't want any of those little little pop-ups, you know, to, to come in there and say, hey, look me, I'm hanging out on your really pretty rose right now, making, you know, just making my appearance right <laughs> here in the middle of your nice hair. photo. Yeah, I, I don't miss stuff like that because I was kind of really taking myself into the image and really yeah. get kind of tunnel visioning on the image, which is means it's a, it's a very successful image. But you know, always remember that you know if an image like this gets bought and it gets you know those things will they're there forever. <laughs> so um, yeah. I usually will take you know little things like that. It would be like if there was an insect that was inconsequential or a, a, a dust spot or anything like that. I get rid of all of those distractions and just leave the rose and the tones and the light. That's your story. That's, you know, that's what your goal was and you definitely have achieved it. So yeah, yeah beautiful and, image. And even if you're not thinking of selling it, not everybody is thinking of selling their images. The, the lessons you learn from if you were trying to sell it, right. carry over to even, you know, you know, if you're not trying to, those, those are lessons. Go ahead. Yeah. Let me give you a scenario real quick yes. on that subject because we, we – I think we've not talked about this before or I may have mentioned it in a different uh, context. So, all right. Maybe Luis is not going to sell his image. Maybe he's not interested in selling his image. But he brought it to the show and people watch the show. And suppose somebody out there said, I want this image on my wall no matter what. Yeah. Even though you don't sell your image, you're going to sell your image. If somebody offers you money you, for it, yes. People are going to come at you with money, right? So that's why we usually check for like noise and the shadows and all this stuff because when you print something, it's way different than when you see it on a screen. Everything comes to life when you print it. Mm-hmm. So we have to be real careful with our editing and all that sort of stuff just to make sure that, you know, hey, if somebody comes at you and says, hey, bud, I want this in a 30 by 60 for my wall – or a 40 by 60 for my wall, I think it's more of a traditional crop, then that's going to get blown up. And suddenly those little specks are going to become, you know, a half inch mark in the middle of the photo. And while the person who saw and fell in love with the photo online didn't see that, yeah, like yeah. you didn't see it. Right. If I blew that up and put it on my wall, you'd definitely see it. And then you'd be like, well, that's all I look at now. Yeah. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. 
This is true. Yeah. So that's why we do the little little what we call border checks. But in this case, would you know you want to just go through the whole image with a fine tooth comb and find all these little marks and find all this little stuff and just clone them right out, man. You're not altering the the mood or the life of the image at all. What you're doing is just cleaning up your your you know your studio a little bit. Yeah. Just getting those those things that decided to show up, and get them out <laughs> there. So well, yep. that was our that was our last image. Um, cool. So. Before we head out, I wanted to mention, go over to the creators.com, um, AD's Patreon page, and consider becoming a Patreon of AD. You, he does, like you mentioned before, if you have something that, that he wants, that you want him to do, a video on, hey, show me how to do this, AD, um, you know, he will take that in, under consideration and maybe post a video out here on on um, Patreon. And uh, what you have several plans here, AD, was the first one's only a dollar. Yeah, actually, so the the community is a community, okay? Yeah. So I have it up there for a buck. I treat everybody in the community. They they all get the use of if they want the video. So this is how the Patreon works. A lot of people always ask me, like, I don't get Patreon. What, what's the deal? Uh, I can just watch videos on YouTube. Well, Patreon is a community of people that all basically want to learn together, that all – have you know knowledge themselves but they also want more knowledge in certain areas patreon is basically subscriber driven so you you join up for a buck and you say hey ad i'm trying to learn macro photography can you show me the basics of macro photography now i have a subject i go make a video and i share it only with you guys just on patreon mm -hmm. and you can get that for a dollar that's how you support me so I can make sure I have the right equipment to shoot the videos and all that kind of stuff. So that's basically what Patreon does. Now, there's other levels. I do like um, business consulting, that sort of stuff, where like if you're trying to get your website to be, you know, uh, you know, better SEO, that sort of thing. Um, you can do a $35 a month thing where once a month I will get with you. We'll talk about your business plan. We'll talk about your website. We'll talk about your social media and we'll give you goals to reach, uh, to work on for the next month to get you to where you want to be. So that's a $35 a month level. I have Janice Sullivan is doing, I think, uh, $75 a month with me and I'm actually producing a podcast for her. So she wow. doesn't want to be – she doesn't want to do what you do, Mike, or what yeah. I do behind the scenes when she's doing her show. So I'm producing it for her. She lives on the West Coast. We're going to make it happen. Um, awesome. I'm going to take the Skype calls. I'm going to regurgitate them out to YouTube and, and Twitch and, and um, stream. I think she's doing Crowdcast. So we're going to restream those, but I'm going to produce it for her so she can just do the show. So she doesn't have to think about, oh, wow, there's like five buttons off to the side I got to push. I got to pre-program all this stuff. And so we have levels for that as well. And my Patreon stuff is all flexible. Um, is So if you don't see it on there, jump in there and write to me and ask if you're interested and, and want to know more. That's that's what it's all about. It's a community of creatives. And I, you're, you're in there and you've been a member in there. And um, you know I'm getting back. I'm building a new studio specifically for Patreon. I said it was a YouTube studio, which the videos end up on YouTube anyway, but you get early access on, and you actually get to control what videos I mm -hmm. make. Um, whereas people on YouTube don't get any of that. So, you know, you get, if you follow me only on YouTube and you're probably like, why doesn't he make a video on this? Or he only makes videos on that or once in a while. That's because it's the people in, in my Patreon who ask for the videos. Yeah. So w when they request a video, that's, uh, that's what we do. And, and Monday, uh, this, this Monday, yeah, Monday, tomorrow. You're starting back tomorrow. Up? I'm starting back up live awesome. streaming again and we're continuing on our, uh, Luminar master, uh, course right now. Um, and it's basically, we're just going through Luminar step by step and teaching people how to use a different photo editor so that they can kind of, I need to watch that, get away from the other stuff. So, yeah, cause I own, I own Luminar, um, and I haven't used it enough. I need to, I need to watch that. And I'm a, I'm a supporter. I think that Patreon is a great way to also help support some of the people that, um, that, you know, you enjoy their product and enjoy what they're doing and, and want to show, you know, some support of that. Because, you know, none of this stuff is free, um, but the, the support is super cheap. I mean, it doesn't have to be that expensive. Anyway, so that's one way to follow AD. There's also the explorographer.com um, where you can go over there and follow him. I think I'm on, actually on your shop, shop site, of part of the site right now. But if we go back uh -huh. to the main page, 
AD has got um, you know your blog basically here and all kind of different ways to contact you um, down here in Facebook. Yeah, who who is Facebook AD? Off. Yeah, it's gone, man. It's, I'm really gone. Who really? Is, who? Really what gone. Are you, why are you saying who's AD? What? So if you go up to the top and it says, oh. I think up there somewhere, who is AD? That's where my contact page is. So there's there you go. some videos about me and what I do. And then if you go to the bottom, there's a little contact thing. And all of, oh, by the way, yeah. all of the review shows uh, appear in appearances. So that video thing right there, our shows are in there. I made a playlist and they get updated. When you release shows, what? I put them in the appearances list. Um, I'm not stealing your views because they're oh, actually your yeah. photos. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. That's cool. Yeah. So you can find, you know, all of that stuff in there and, and, um, you can contact me on that page if you have yep. questions. So, so just because you're not on Facebook, we haven't lost you. There's, a, there's plenty of ways to to get AD. And talking about how you can get this show, um, of course, on on uh, YouTube here. If you're watching us live or on Facebook, you're watching us live. You, know, you can get it either way. You should subscribe to us on YouTube. But if you um, want to get it in the form of you know like iTunes or something like that, go over to jpedraw slash subscribe. Cursor down, and here's the links to the. Uh, we only produce an, a video portion of this show. Uh, the other one I do, we have an audio too. But for this one, it, you really need the video. So we're on YouTube, we're on Vimeo, we're on iTunes with a video large and a video sm small too. Um, from from there, so those are the places you can get it. If you want to subscribe to it, um, I generally put it out on YouTube first, and this live show will be out on YouTube until. Uh, I will end up moving it into the live show thing, and then the produce show will have um, the beginning and the end, the pre-show and post-show cut off. So yeah, that's that's the bonus actually of yeah. showing up for the live. You and, get the pre and, and post, sub, and go to if you go to Mike's channel and you click the notification bell on his channel, you can join us for the live thing, and you get the pre and post show because we always talk about silly things during the pre and post show that you guys can join in the conversation with. And um, about, I think it's, yeah. yeah. That's part yeah. of my favorite. That's some of my favorite parts. We're about to head in the post show right now. So um, AD, thanks for coming out. Um, glad to see you. I know you're not fully moved in, but you know, at least getting settled in and excited to see when the new studio gets ready. Thanks, man. Yeah. And just uh, be thankful you can't see behind the camera. <laughs> hey, Anything outside the range of the camera, you know, doesn't matter. Um, all right. So that's it for tonight. And till next show, keep shooting. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.